<laughs> he has never changed. Is he? Is he lost his voice? <laughs> you, you liar! <laughs> what are you, are you doing, burgers? Because could they email me a couple of onion rings, please? I'm starving. <laughs> so you never lose it, do well, you? You'll have you to never wait lose till 12... it. Look, are you you'll two? You have to wait till twelve o'clock. All right, we like that. That's when you open up, isn't it? Because that's your gig now. <laughs> so look, Eddie, um, you're always laughing, you're always smiling, but there was a time, wasn't there, when the joking stopped and it was really serious. Talk us about when you. Well, you were given the news that you kind of could drop dead on stage unless yeah. you stopped working. We, I think it was 2000, I went to the doctors, and he said, what are you doing? We were just about to go on this 12-week tour of holiday camps and caravan parks and things like that. Yeah. So we were doing three nights in the northwest, three nights in the northeast, three nights uh, down the coast and right down into Essex, over to Torquay, down to Cornwall. And he looked at me and said, uh, I don't think you should do this. I said, well, why not? He said, you do realise you could drop dead at any minute. But typical showbiz, everyone, including you two, have been ill and still worked, haven't you? And you still. And I explained, you know, if I don't work, Sid doesn't work. And that was a blow for Sid, um, because it was the end of your amazing partnership, wasn't it, Sid? But I guess it also must have been horrible for you to see him getting weaker and weaker. You must have been very aware of the state he was in. Well, yes, because it, was, it wasn't just like instantly, uh, as Eddie said, that the tour, that was the end of it. But a few years before that, he was actually told, which I'm sure he'd tell you, that he, he had heart failure. And, and, and so we, I saw a decline over the years, you know, over a few years. And uh, I'm sure, you know, Eddie might tell you as well that uh, he, you know, he sort of was told that if you don't have a heart transplant, you know, you, 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 you're you going to die. And uh, he kept putting it up because he didn't feel too bad, I'm sure he'll tell you at the time. Oh, no, well, you know, because you could die on the, f the table, you could die here. Oh, no, I'll, I'll carry on then. I'll ca and he kept carrying on and carrying on as well. And, uh, of course, like I said, he showbiz, you know, you, 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 it is Dr... You, you feel good when you go on television, you know, Dr. Showbiz, whatever you call it. And he, he went on and he just kept going and going till eventually... As he's just said, that the other doctors say you're going to die if you don't have a heart. Yeah. Thanks, Sid. Eddie, um, the transplant, and that's why we're primarily here today, saved your life. And I read this morning about how you could never put into words the gratitude that you feel to the family of your donor. But from that came a, a desire and a commitment to make the most of this second chance at life. Well, absolutely. Um... You cannot say, they, they said, would you write a letter to the, the donor family? And I just wanted to write thank you 500 times. Mm. And, and every day I think about it, and every, every day I'm grateful for what the gift I've been given. I mean, I've had 14 years. I'd have been dead 14 years ago. There's a lot of people who don't get that second chance. Mm. Today's about this opt-out scheme. I, I was saying this this morning. I, I, I haven't signed what I should sign. I'm, I'm literally going to do it today because I should do it. I wonder how many people watching this would be happy to donate their organs, but actually mm. haven't done that. And that's what today's about, right? Yeah, I hope so. Especially the hardest thing for anyone to do if they've got young children is to sign them up to the donor register, obviously, because you never expect your children to die anyway. Uh, but young children die because of lack of organs. Mm. So I would... I think once... The, if they accept the opt-out system, I think the people will get more educated about the organ donation and what it entails and things and I think maybe they might put the youngsters up uh, because I, I I knew a 12 year old who was waiting for a heart transplant a young girl who lived about five miles from me and I just had my operation and I got in touch with a few letters blah 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 they tried to piggy bank uh, piggy back sorry a, f a five year old's heart on hers and it didn't work and she's no longer with us Heartbreaking. Uh, it is, and I went. I had a false alarm. I went to Patworth Hospital, where I eventually had my operation, and I was waiting for the heart, which wasn't good enough. And there was a young girl. I thought she was about ten. Mm -hmm. She turned out she was seventeen, and she was waiting for the lungs, and they weren't good enough. So this it's little just wave heartbreaking, sat and there the and difference thought, oh. it makes if people do sign up is extraordinary, because yeah. it was straight away for you, wasn't it? There were people in your family that never seen you laugh and joke because you simply didn't have the energy, which is extraordinary yeah. for us who know you as a legendary comic. But it transformed you literally overnight. Absolutely. I could not... I couldn't walk, for, you know, I couldn't walk across the studio. I'd have to keep stopping and... I mean, I, the worst there was, I always tell this, 
when I put my seatbelt on, it was such an effort, it took a one minute at least to get my breath oh. back. Even turning the car engine on. <sighs> that's just, how bad I was. Just two 